Welcome back to another Electronics and More video. On my channel of over 375 videos, I only show two or three videos relating to solar panels or solar cells. Today I'd like to show you panels that I've acquired over the past 10 years, explain the differences between them, how they're made, rated output, and also show you a very nice, extremely compact, highly rated, and highly affordable USB solar charger for all your USB devices. Now to get started, I'll be taking a look at these 26 watt, 12 volt panels. Now back in 2008, I was looking for a couple of solar panels that I was going to carry with me on a boat as well as hiking. And when you're using electronics on boats, most of the time you're going to be dealing with 12 volt electronics. You're going to be using it for the radio on the boat, the GPS, the depth finder. So I ended up purchasing two of these panels, each one of these panels can supply up to 2 amps of current at 12 volts. And you can see here it folds into a very nice compact little package like a folder. The weight isn't too bad. And right over here on top you can see it has two DC jacks. And what you could do is you could take a cable just like this and parallel two panels together by plugging this into one and plugging it over here into the other and then you could take the output here and use it to charge 12 volt batteries. The open circuit voltage is around 20 volts on these panels. I could take a charge controller like you see right here, plug it into this panel, connect this to the battery, and the battery, once it's fully charged, will stop charging. Inside these panels is a blocking diode, so when you connect the two together, the current flow is only going to be going out of the panel it cannot flow backwards into the panel. I also carried one of these, the accessory sockets, to be able to plug that directly into here to power a cell phone at the time. I would take a car charger, plug it in here, and I would be good to go. Using a small switching converter, I could take this right here, plug this into the switching converter, take the other wire, plug it into the panel, and then I'd be able to have a regulated output, 12 volts or less. I was able to power 3, 5, 6, 9, and 12 volt electronics using this panel. Now this panel was very expensive. I paid around $240 for each one of these panels. And the reason why it was so much money is because it is a high-end panel. The type of photovoltaic material that was used is known as CIGS, which is copper, indium, gallium, selenide and that photovoltaic material happens to be the best one commercially available at this point. There are two other types. One is amorphous silicon, and it looks like what you see over here in the calculator. The efficiency of those panels are much lower. So if you have a 10 watt amorphous silicon panel, it's going to be a larger panel compared to a 10 watt CIGS panel like you see here. This one's the most efficient, and the amorphous silicon is the lowest efficiency. There is another thin film panel which is used and that is a cadmium telluride panel and the efficiency is somewhere in the middle between this one and the amorphous silicon. The panel you see here is around 15 percent efficiency and the amorphous silicon is well under 10. How this was made, they take a substrate right here which is this plastic material. You could take this and it's flexible I mean, you can't bend it in half and fold it and put a line through it, but you can bend it around. And if this is laying on a hard surface, there's no reason why you could not walk over this without damaging it. A thin film of photovoltaic material, CIGS, is deposited onto this plastic reinforced substrate. Once it's been bonded with all the traces and wires connecting each one of these in series, it goes over to that power hub. A clear material is placed over the top and it acts like a waterproofing surface so now when it rains water will run off of this panel. As you notice there's also grommets on each corner and that's for securing the solar panel to your tent or other objects so it faces directly towards the sun for maximum power output. You can see that this side here if it rains on it it's not going to make any difference because the opening with the jack is on the other side. Here you can see the power traces leading from the panel into that power hub, going right in. 
So if you are looking for a high quality folding solar panel, you're definitely going to want to look for a CIGS solar panel. Now let me show you another panel that I put together for operating 5 volt devices or USB devices. Now the panel you're looking at right here, this was originally designed to charge a 6 volt sealed lead acid battery. The voltage output on this panel was right around 9 volts. Each one of these cells is a half of a volt, so you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 volts approximately. It's actually slightly higher because these are around 0.52 to 0.55 volts per solar cell. I wanted a nice compact USB solar charger, so years ago I put this one together using an LM7805 capacitor on the input, capacitor on the output, and I added the USB connector you see right here. Inside the USB connector I made sure the data pins also have voltage so most of the devices will charge. Power output I get on that USB connector is around a half of an amp which is sufficient to charge the great majority of my devices. Now it is very thin. It's only about maybe four millimeters thick. You have a bunch of polycrystalline solar cells on here. You can see right in there the crystals. And these are actually made by pouring the silicon material as opposed to cutting it when they make monocrystalline panels. Polycrystalline panels like you see here, they have a very good power output in full sun, but they work very poorly in lower levels of light and the efficiency of these type of panels is between 13 and 16 percent. This particular panel was made by taking the aluminum base, all right, there's aluminum on the bottom, there's a non-conductive material, probably epoxy, on top of the aluminum, then all the solar cells were glued on top of that epoxy in series. Once they were all glued down, a layer of clear epoxy was poured on top. This way it's now waterproof. These panels are very easy to make. If you don't want to use something like this, you can use a small switching power supply to step the voltage up or down depending on the panel that you use. Now polycrystalline panels like you see right here are less expensive to make than monocrystalline panels. Now the way to tell the difference between the two is very simple. You look right over here at this image. You're going to see the image on the right, the solar cell on the right is a polycrystalline. You can see it has all the corners and you look at the one on the left and you're going to see the corners are rounded off and then all four sides were cut flat. Now the reason why the corners are rounded off is because when monocrystalline cells are made just like the name says it's cut from one crystal and usually that crystal is cylindrical in shape so once it's sliced it's going to be round. If those monocrystalline cells were left round and you place them all on top of this board, what's going to happen, you're going to have a lot less surface area of that board covered by solar cells. So the purpose of cutting the size of the cells is to make sure that the solar cells take up as much space of the surface area on that panel. And over here, this image shows exactly what I'm talking about. You can see all the solar cells are very close and only small spaces at the corner of the solar cells are exposed. The rest of the board is covered by those monocrystalline cells. Monocrystalline panels, like I just showed you, are going to be more expensive to produce, much, much better in low light for power output. They work great in full sunlight. They last a lot longer, 20, 25 years or longer, and they also have a higher efficiency between 15 and 20 percent. So if you have a monocrystalline panel, that's 100 watts, and it's this size right here to have the equivalent power output in a polycrystalline panel of lower efficiency it's going to have to be a larger panel. This right here is another cool thing that I picked up years ago and what it's designed to do it's a very small solar panel it says button battery pocket charger so if you have a button cell from a watch or any other little device take the suction cup like this flip it around you would stick this on the window and this would be facing the sun right here. Take that one and a half volt battery and you would connect it between the alligator clip and the base. Over here is a little red LED. Not only does it act as a power indicator to let you know that it's charging, 
but it's also a blocking diode. Cool device, solar energizer, and it only takes three to six hours. Now let me show you the last panel. This folding solar panel is a Blitzwolf 20 watt solar charger. I did do some tests on this and the actual rating is a little lower and I'll tell you in a minute about that. But the reason why I was looking for a very small USB charger was because I got tired of carrying around my heavier folding 12 volt solar panel. And the problem with this panel, because it had the 12 volt output, I had to use a special adapter to get the voltage down to 5 volts and not all the time would I be able to charge all of my USB devices because I had to make sure the data pin voltage was correct on the USB jack. This one here will charge two devices and it has a 3 amp output so you'll be able to charge any USB device using this panel and I have tested it using all kinds of tablets it'll do iPhones, it'll charge the tablet and my phone at the same time and because this panel right here appears to be a flexible monocrystalline panel the power output is exceptional and it also will charge the phone if you don't have full sunlight let's open it up and take a look at it okay this is what the Blitzwolf panel looks like once it's folded open alright you have a nice canvas material well stitched on the back side there is a plastic material which I'll show you inside this pocket in a minute you also have grommets so you could secure this on your tent facing the sun or you could even put a strap here from one side to the other place it around your neck or by your shoulders and have this draped over your back facing the sun as you're walking away from the sun to charge things you could put your phone inside this pocket each one of these panels has some flexibility to it and you can see the monocrystalline cells and there's a clear covering on top keep in mind this was not designed to be left out in the rain but it is more or less rain resistant you can see the solar cells are darker and the darker ones tend to work better in lower light now if you take a look at this pocket over here just velcro Inside here is a USB hub. There's two of them. Let me give you a better angle on it. Right there you can see it says S Power. And this is a specially designed hub. Here you can see the back has that waterproof material on it. This automatically adapts to the maximum power output or the maximum charging output for the device that's plugged in. And as I said earlier, you'll get three full amps of current you could charge a device that has a 2.1 amp requirement no problem and you could charge even two smartphones whatever you need to do this will deliver the maximum amount of charging current to that device this pocket here is ideal because you don't want your phone in the sun when it's charging you could place it in the pocket and then plug it into that USB port sometimes like I do take it put it underneath and I could just charge it that way as well. Now the test that I performed on this panel showed an output of around 15 or 16 watts which is still excellent due to the size of this and how inexpensive this panel is compared to one like you see right over here but it does not appear to be that 20 watt rating. I did contact the company and they performed a test using an electronic load like you see in this image over here showing the output around 18.6 watts using an artificial source of sunlight. Right now the smartphone and the tablet are charging together at the same time. Let me take the camera over to the smartphone and tablet and show you. Okay the tablet is charging 10%. Let's go over to here and that's charging at 61. Now here's another thing that you can do. You can take a USB cable connect up alligator clips on the black and red wire, the positive and negative, and if you have any electronic devices that operate using four AAA or AA batteries, you could take this 5.25 volt output and use it to power the device. Right here is a piece of resistive wire connected across the output, and like I said earlier, you do get a good current output off of these wires. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, 
please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.